Um, my question uh, relates to Salesforce mm -hmm. and uh, Slack, given you were a Slack owner before Salesforce acquired it. Yeah. And the question would be, um, how do you see the Slack acquisition by Salesforce and how do you continually track its progress? And maybe related to that, the second question would be, what do you see as main risks in the Salesforce investment? Yeah, thank you. So we were invested in Slack um, uh, uh, a couple of years ago. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's, it's kind of like a, a WhatsApp, uh, but for business to business. Um, so uh, it's a messaging tool for businesses. Um, it was uh, an incredibly successful, successful company, which was growing primarily virally. So obviously any messaging service, the more people who are on it, the more value it, it has to you. So it would sort of grow sort of virally just by people passing it on to each other. Um, but I think they sort of hit a, hit a wall at some point where they needed, um, you know, if you want to penetrate the larger companies, then you have to have an enterprise sales force uh, team who can sort of go and, you know, speak to the management and convince them of, of how good your product is. And so I think they hit a bit of a wall. And that was around the time that um, um, Salesforce.com bought uh, Slack. This was probably about 18 months ago now. And... Um, I thought it was an incredibly smart uh, decision because um, it gave um, you know, Slack what it was missing, which was an enterprise uh, sales team. And from Salesforce's perspective, you know, Salesforce, as I'm sure many of you are aware, is a sort of an enterprise software company with lots of different software modules, primarily um, you know, for the process of selling um, uh, stuff in a, in a company. And what Salesforce was lacking, though, was sort of uh, something to kind of tie all those individual modules together. And I think that's what, what Slack brings to them. So I think it was an incredibly uh, smart decision. And um, at the time, the market was very, very pessimistic about it. So I think the day Salesforce announced it was going to purchase Slack, the share price was down you know, 15 20% or something like that. And so that was really, you know, Salesforce is a company I've followed for many years. Um, but that was the, the, the moment where I started sort of focusing on it as a potential investment. And, um, um, you know, I think Salesforce is a great company. I think the Slack acquisition makes a lot of sense. And, um, uh, you know, as I had the cash coming in from this, you know, the, per the sale of Slack uh, to Salesforce, I basically used those funds to invest into salesforce.com. Um, and in terms of tracking uh, how Slack does, you know, I think, Slack's really, it has this enormous opportunity to become effectively like the WhatsApp uh, for business. And um, if it achieves that, it could be, you know, Slack alone, I think, could be worth as much as Salesforce.com is uh, today. Um, I think it has a great chance of achieving that through the combination of its own viral growth plus the very powerful Salesforce that Salesforce.com has. So, um, it will be super interesting to, to, see, to see how that goes and probably the key metric to follow is, is how, um, how's, how the users are growing and you know, how the revenue is growing at Slack. Um, I had a question about Salesforce. So one can argue that generally there's been an increase in the number of firms providing similar or the exact same software in both the developed world and the emerging world. So potentially, can this, do you feel or do you believe that um, this can commoditize the sector Salesforce, Salesforce operates in and essentially create negative, um, or, uh, negative pressure on the future earnings potential of the company in the long run? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, um, the, the, the really important thing to understand, I think, is that, that Salesforce is really like an operating business for, for, for companies. Uh, you know, there's companies that build their entire business around uh, salesforce.com. Um, it's so tightly integrated into all their processes, all their data and stuff, it's almost impossible to imagine a scenario where, where it gets ripped out. Um, you know, so in short, it's not something that I worry about. Um, I mean, the one thing you do see is, um, you know, what I just said refers obviously to large established businesses, but there's obviously a lot of newly established businesses and um, and for them that argument doesn't uh, doesn't count and so you have a lot of lighter CRM solutions easier to use uh, of cheaper as well and for a, a smaller company probably it's more natural for them to then gravitate towards one of those type of uh, solutions 
Um, you know, so I think there will be some, some well, there, there is competition in that part of the market. But even there, what I've, you know, I've spoken in the past to venture capitalists, and what you hear is that at some point, when the business gets to scale, they're going to want to switch to Salesforce uh, at any point. And so, you know, the ambitious companies which are, are really being built for scale oftentimes, you know, start out with Salesforce so they don't have to switch later on. So um, it's such a, it's such, I mean, it's, an, it's almost like an industry standard, I would say. It's, it's really difficult to, to imagine anyone really sort of disrupting it. Um, but, you know, th but there is competition certainly at the low end for, for sort of small and medium-sized businesses. Yeah.